Okay, greetings, Michael DDA here. We are talking about the 55 years. What happened in the 55 years between the time that Israel died and the time that Joseph died? There's 55 years in there. The scriptures are very, very silent about that time period. It was a very good time period for Israel, not so much for Esau. We're going to find out today. Uh, this information is all going to come from Yasher today. Torah is completely silent on what happened during this time. Last week, I'm going to go back to actually the beginning of chapter 57. Last week, we buried Israel. Remember all Israel, all the men of Israel, all what they say, um, Pharaoh's servants came with Israel's seed, all men, and they carried Jacob's buyer all the way to Haran, not Haran, uh, Hebron. Here it is right here. Um, pulled it up. They came from down here. In this area, the Delta, which is where they were living. They probably came the way to Shur and took this road, I forget where the Central Ridge route, all the way to Hebron. There's Hebron there where I put the uh, red star. Then we had a huge brouhaha. Do you remember? Esau came and said that the cave at Machpelah was his, and they couldn't bury Jacob there. Well, they sent Naphtali back to say, get the paperwork. And once he realized that they, that they had the documents that they were going to prove that he was a liar, he started fighting with Jacob's seed. Esau's seed started fighting with Jacob's seed. And in the midst of the battle, a son of Dan, Cushim, deaf and dumb, ran up to Esau and off his head. He died pretty much the same time that Jacob died. And I think that's really interesting because it's kind of like the Jacob is the spirit part of the man. They're twins. And Esau is the flesh part of the man. And they are in total disagreement with one another. Totally antagonistic with one another. Esau was never interested in the ways of Yahovah, where Jacob spent many years with first Shem, and then after Shem died, there was a short period he came home, and then he went right back, and he was with Eber for another year, a bunch of more years. Well, they fought this day. Finally, was so severe after after uh, Esau died that they decided to to run for the hills, and so they came from Hebron, heading back to Sair. They came to we chased them to the border of Sair. I say we Israel seed chased them to the border of Sair. This is Sair. Uh, in fact, here it is. You can read it here. S E I R. Sayer. This is going to be known as Edom in the future. In fact, we're going to see today how it came to be Edom. Because remember, the Torah says that Esau is Edom. Well, so much to learn. So we're going to pick it up today in their running away and heading back to Sayer. And actually, I'm going to go through some portion that we actually went through before uh, because I, you know, pronouns. 
pronouns in the Torah, you got to sort those out very, very carefully, or you don't know who we're talking about. And I think, as I was closing my class the last time, especially in the last verse that we read before we closed, I was confused. I didn't read it properly because I didn't understand what was going on. And so I want us to be sure that we understand what's going on. This chapter, 57 of Yasher, is about Esau's seed. The last chapter was primarily about the bearing of Jacob and Israel's seed and Egypt. But now we're making a transition when we go to this chapter 57, and it's primarily about Esau's seed. So when I read Esau's seed, the sons of Esau, I'm going to put a underline mark under Esau. And if we do it with Jacob, I'm going to put the kind of the up and down mark with, with Jacob, because I want you to be able to see this is easy, of course. We can understand Esau from Jacob. But when they talk about they and there, then it's going to be a little bit more confusing. And this is going to help us to understand who the they and who the there are. Do you follow what I'm saying? So let's go through this. I think you're going to find this chapter. Again, Torah is totally silent about what's going on during this time period. Uh, very interesting. There's a reason why the Pharaoh who came after Joseph died, who knew not Joseph, realized that he had a problem with these people who were in his land. And we're going to see that very, very clearly today. Wait till you see. I think you're going to be very impressed. So we're going to start at chapter 57 today. And it was after Esau's seed waged war with Jacob's seed that Esau's seed fought with Jacob's seed in Hebron. And Esau was still lying dead and not buried. Remember, he knocked off his head. And the battle was heavy between them and Esau's seed. Between them, that's so interesting. They, they would say them. Between them and Esau's seed were between them. Them both, I suppose. And Esau's seed were smitten before Jacob's seed. And Jacob's seed slew of Esau's seed 80 men. And not one died of the people of Jacob's seed. We didn't lose anybody. They lost 80. And the hand of Joseph prevailed over all the people of Esau's seed. And he took Zepho. Ben Elavaz, Ben Esau. Ben. Just so we know, they're twins. And 50 of his men captive, and he bound them with chains of iron and gave them into the hands of his servants to bring them to Egypt. Zepho is coming to Egypt. I think he's going to be in Egypt for 43 years, a prisoner and a servant of Israel. And it came to pass when Jacob's seed had taken Zepho and his people captive, all those that remained were greatly afraid for their lives from the house of Esau. And they, see, this is where we have the first they, they should also be taken captive, lest they should also be taken captive. And they all fled with Esau with Eliphaz ben Esau and his people, and Esau's body, and Esau's body, the headless body. And they, and they went on their road to Mount Sayer. So this is them running away. And they came to Mount Sayer, and they buried Esau in Sayer, but they had not brought his head with them. To Sayer, for it had been it was buried in the place where the battle had been in Hebron. Now, here we've gone, they've run away, they've come to Sayer, but now we're going back to the chase. And it came to pass 
when Esau's seed had fled from before Jacob's seed, that Jacob's seed preferred, pursued them unto the border of Sair. But they did not slay a single man. They, Jacob's seed, did not slay, slay a single man from among them, Esau's seed. And they pursued them for, Esau, for Esau's body, which they had carried with them, excited their confusion. So they fled, and Jacob's seed turned back from them. And now this is where it got confusing. And came up to the place where their brethren were in Hebron. So they are they fled from them. No, they fled from Jacob's seed. And Jacob's seed turned back and came back to their brother in Hebron. Their brother, Jacob, Jacob's seed's brother. Now it says, and they remained there for three days. When they remained there for three days, I thought... We were talking about Jacob's seed. They remained there for three days. Or they remained there one day, and the next day they rested from their battle. No, this is not that day. It's the other day. It's Esau's day. This makes sense because now look at the next verse. It says, and it came to pass on the third day. So what did we have? We had one day, two day, third day. It came to pass on the third day that they, this is Esau's seed, Esau's seed assembled all Sire the Korites' seed, and they assembled all the East seed, a multitude of people like the sand of the sea. And they went and came down to Egypt to fight with Joseph and his brethren in order to deliver their brethren. Whoa, look at this, you guys. There's some things that we need to talk about. First, this is as the sands of the sea. How many are we talking about? We're going to see that 600,000 men of this crowd are going to die. That's a lot of men. That's almost over over half a billion men. Six hundred thousand. Two things I want to talk about. One is the East Seed. Who are they? Who are when we talk about the East Seed? Let's understand who we're talking about. It says the East Seed are all Abraham's seed through Keturah. Here it says that in Yasher, Midian seed, and Midian seed sent all their brethren, the east seed, and all their brethren, all Keturah's seed came to assist Midian in the fight with, with Moab. So uh, this is just uh, something that later on, but I wanted you to understand that Midian seed is part of the east seed. And the East Seed was helping Midian fight Moab in this thing. So when we're talking about the East Seed, we're talking about Keturah's sons, the sons of Keturah, not the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites will be a part of the battles uh, later on. Um, Korite, Sayer the Korite. You know, we always see Horites. What is a Horite? Where does a Horite come from? I have been perplexed by this. And again, it's Yasher that cleared it up for me. You know, I tell you, Yasher is the rest of the story. Here is Yasher 10, 28. It says, and Sayer, I think this is right after the fall of Babylon, when we were being, when, when the world was being dispersed. It says, and Sayer, Ben Kor, Ben Heavy, Ben Canaan. I added Ben Ham, Ben Noah, just for you guys. It wasn't in the text. But Sayer Ben Kor, Kor, it's Hor. This is where we get the word Horite. I know it says H O R, not H U R. It's hard. 
because things are transliterated in the Torah uh, by different individuals, it's very difficult. You got to you got to sort it out. And I'm thankful that we had this verse in Yasher that kind of gave us the lineage of Sayer coming down all the way from Canaan. Really, for me, all the way from Noah, because we want to know where they're coming from. He took, it says, went and found a valley opposite Mount Paran, and he built a city there. He and his seven sons and his household dwelt there, and he called the name of the city which he built Sayir, according to its name. That is the land of Sayir unto this day. So apparently there was a city of Sayir, and then the whole land became Sayir as well. Now, uh, the next two verses probably are just something that I found was interesting. Um, it's, this is, this is Esau came and took, this is in Yasher. So these, this is, this is actual, this is correct. Uh, and in the sixth year, Esau took for a woman, in addition to his other women, this was his third wife, Ahibama, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. The Hivites were the descendants of Sayer. Remember, not not descendants. They were the uh, well, heavy bore core bore Sayer. They're, they were the relations of of Sayer. This is what got. This is what got brought Esau into this part of the world to begin with, because he married these this daughter. Incidentally, just just a point of interest. I, I know it's a terrible hiatus, but these it says these were the sons of Zibion. So he had daughters, but these were the sons of Zibion, Naja and Nana. This was the Anna who found the water in the wilderness as he passed through the donkeys for of his father Zibion. This is the man who found those strange creatures. You look at it, we, we read them, and it was like, where is this talking about? Is this? But, you know, nowadays, coming from the dumps that are under the earth right now, there are strange creatures coming out. I think this is the origin of those strange creatures or a relation to those strange creatures. Coming out of a cave, perhaps, in that part of the world, it would make sense. So, Korite, Korite, this is what I'm reading right here. Horite. Really, Kori is, is what it is. It gets translated as Kor, Horite, transliterated as Horite. But it's Kori seems to be used synonymously with Hivite. And, you know, Korite, here's Kor, and here's Hivi. Hivi was a son of Kor. So that makes sense that it would be used synonymously, but they're not synonymous. I mean, there's a big difference between the sons of Kohath and the Aaronic priesthood. Yes, they are the priesthood, the Aaronic priesthoods are all Kohathites, but not all Kohathites are the Aaronic priesthood. So there's a big difference there. In the same way, all the sons of Sayer are Kohites and also Hivites. But not all Hivites are going to be Korites. You understand what I'm saying? So here, this is transliteration. Uh, Kor is transliterated as Hor. And Kor is where the word Korite, Horite, come from. It's hard because the vowels, even the consonants, changed depending on who is translating the Hebrew. In this context, a Korite is also a Hivite, but not all Hivites are Korites. That's what I was just speaking about. Okay, well, that's a hiatus, I know, but I thought it was interesting. For me, I always wanted to know where these, say, the Korite, Korite. 
Where does this come from? Who are these people? Well, they have an origin. We have to figure it out. They're sons of Canaan. They're Canaanites. In, in a sense, they're, they're Canaanites. Hivi was a son of Canaan. He's a Canaanite. All right, I'll drop it. Um, Sands of the sea, and they went and came down to Egypt to fight with Joseph, his brethren, and his brethren, in order to deliver their, in order to deliver their brethren. They're going down to Egypt with this massive amount of men. Is it almost a billion men? How many men is it? You're going to lose 600,000. How many men are you actually bringing with you? This has got to be a huge amount. And now watch what happens. And Joseph and all Jacob's seed heard that Esau's seed and the Esau's seed had come upon them to battle in order to deliver their brethren. And Joseph and his brethren and the strong men of Egypt, Joseph and his brethren and the strong men of Egypt went forth and fought in the city of Ramses. And Joseph and his brethren dealt a tremendous blow against amongst Esau's seed and the East seed. A tremendous blow. How many men came to fight against this army that was as the sands of the sea? It's the same group of men, really that were fighting Esau's seed at Haran. I say Haran, I keep, uh, Hebron, not Haran, Hebron, at the cave, Machpelah. Look what it says. And they slew 600,000 men. And they slew amongst them all the mighty men of Sayyir, the Korites' seed. There were only a few of them left. And they slew all the great many, all, also a great many of the East Seed and Esau's Seed. And Eliphaz and Esau and the East Seed all fled before Joseph and his brethren. There was such a large slaughter, they retreated again and ran away. And Joseph and his brother pursued them until they came onto Sukkot. Here, let me show you a map. Here they are. They came from here all the way down to here. Ramses is where they're fighting. And it says that the battle was there, and then they pursued them all the way to Sukkot. Well, Sukkot, we don't know for sure where it is. It's got a question mark. Uh, I got a hunch it's probably further away than than uh, they, than it is, because they always want to make this area, uh, the Sinai Peninsula, the, uh, well, you really can't see it. I'll bring it, bring it out a little bit. The Sinai Peninsula. No, she's still not big enough. The Sinai Peninsula, there it is, Sinai Peninsula, they always want to make it um, where where the Mount Sinai is. That's why they call it the Sinai Peninsula, because they figured it was there. But Sinai Peninsula, the Sinai, Jabal al is over here in the land of Midian. Okay, um, going back. They slew them in Sukkot. Remember, they were chasing them away. And the rest escaped, and they fled each to his own city. And Joseph and his brethren and the mighty men of Egypt turned back from them with joy and cheerfulness of heart, for they had smitten all their enemies. And Zepho, then Eliphaz, and his men were still slaves in Egypt to Jacob's seed, and their pains increased. And when Esau's seed and Sire's seed returned to their land, Sire's seed saw that they had all fallen into the hands of Jacob's seed. And the people of Egypt, on account of the battle of 
Esau's seed. And Sayer's seed said unto Esau's seed, you have seen and therefore you know that this camp was on your account. This battle was on your account. And not one mighty man or adept of war or an adept in war, a mighty man or an adept in war man remaineth. They lost a lot of people. Now, therefore, go from our land. This is Sayer's seed kicking Esau's seed out of their land. Where are they going to go? Go from us to the land of Canaan, to the land of the dwelling place of your fathers. Wherefore shall your seed inherit the effects of our seed in the latter days? Why should you have uh, possession of the things that our seed has done from the time we were here? Where is Jacob, or where would Esau go? We, that was what the whole battle in, in uh, Hebron was all about, and they gave him Mechilah, because the land is, belongs to Israel. Wherefore shall your seed inherit the effects of our seed in the latter days? And Esau's seed would not listen to Sire's seed, and Sire's seed considered to make war with them. We got another brouhaha going on. Remember, this is almost immediately after Jacob has passed. This huge battle in Hebron, this even bigger battle in, what was the name of that place? Uh, Ramses. Ramses. And now, is that where it was, Ramses? Oh, here we go. Ramses, yeah, Ramses, okay. Even bigger battle than in Ramses. They had no place to go. And Esau's seed would not listen. Yeah, this is all happening. That's what I was saying. This is all happening right after Israel perishes. I mean, within months, maybe a couple of years, maybe, but I think it's within months that, that, that they're actually going to bring this huge army down to Egypt to fight with Israel's seed and Egypt's seed. Oh, my gosh. There's a lot going on here. And Esau's seed had, had sent secretly to Angias, king of Africa. The same is Dinaba. Africa, apparently, is Dinaba. I think it's kind of like Sayir, and Sayir the city and Sayir the land. Dinaba is not only a city, but it's also a land. I think is how we can talk about this. It says, sent unto us, this is Esau's seed talking to Angaius, king of Africa, same as Dinaba, king of Dinaba. Send unto us some of thy mighty men, and let them come unto us, and we will fight together with Sair the Korites' seed, for they have resolved to fight with us to drive us away from the land. These are mercenaries. They're requesting mercenaries. And then Gaius, <coughs> excuse me, and Gaius, king of Dinama, did so. For he was in those days friendly with Esau's seed. And then Gaius sent 500 valiant infantry and to Esau's seed and 800 cavalry, 1,100 men, to fight with Esau's seed, with Sayer's seed. And Sire's seed sent unto the east seed and unto the children of Midian, unto Midian's seed. That's so funny that they would say the east seed and Midian seed, because we just read that verse. And that's part of the reason why I picked that verse, because Midian seed 
is part of the east seat, saying, you have seen what Esau's seed has done to us. They're blaming it on Esau's seed, upon the upon whose account we are almost all destroyed in their battle with Jacob's seed. You can tell they're pretty bitter about it. Their battle, in their battle with Jacob's seed. Now, therefore, come to us and assist us, and we will fight them together, and we will drive them from the land and be avenged of their cause of our be avenged of the cause of our brethren who died for their sakes in their battle and with their brethren, Jacob's seed. And the east seed listened to Sayer's seed. And they came unto them about 800 men. So they're bringing 800 men with drawn swords. And Esau's seed fought with Sayer's seed at that time in the wilderness of Paran. Here's the wilderness of Paran. Let's make sure we understand where everything is at here. Uh, zoom out again. Here is the wilderness of Paran right here. So here's Sayer. The east seed is coming from up this direction, and they're going to fight in the wilderness of Paran right here. Why they chose that place to fight, I, I don't really understand why. Uh, I don't think there was any of the East Seed in this part of the world. It was all up, up, up north and west, um, or east of the Jordan River. But that's where they fought. Uh, and, and Sayer prevailed over Esau's Seed. Remember, this is a battle between Sayer and sons of Esau. And Esau's seed slew in that day of Esau's seed. In that battle, about 200 men of the people of Angaius, king of Dinabah. So he had 1,100 men. Now we're down to 900 men. And on the second day, Esau's seed came again to fight a second time with Sayer's seed. And the battle was sore upon Esau's seed the, the second time. And it troubled them greatly on account of Sayer's seed. And, Say, and Esau's seed saw that Sayer's seed, no, and when Esau's seed saw that Sayer's seed were more powerful than they, some men of Esau's seed, remember this is, they've been, this is who they've been friends with all this time, years. Esau's seed and Sayer's seed. They're, they're bosom buddies. Some of the men of Esau's seed turned to assist Sayer's seed in their battle. Interesting. And there fell of the people of Esau's seed in the second battle. 58 men of the people of Angaius, king of Dinabah. Now he's got uh, 842 left of Esau's seed, or of, of, of the men that came from king Angaius. On the third day, Esau's seed heard that some of their brethren had turned from them to fight against them in the second battle. And Esau's seed mourned when they heard this thing. And they said, what shall we do unto our brethren who turned from us to assist Sayer's seed, our enemy? And Esau's seed again sent to Angaius, king of Dinabah, saying, send unto us again other men that with them we may fight Sayer's seed, for they have already twice been heavier than we were. And then Gaius sent to them, sent to Esau's seed, 600 valiant men. So they were down to 842. Now they're going back up to 1442. And they came to assist Esau's seed. 
But in 10 days' time, Esau's seed again waged war with Sayer's seed in the wilderness of Paran. And the battle was very severe upon Sayer's seed. And Esau's seed prevailed at, at this time over Sayer's seed. And Sayer's seed were smitten before Esau's seed, and Esau's seed slew them about 2,000 men. And all the mighty men of Sayer's seed died in this battle. And there all only remained their young children that were left in their cities. And all Midian and his seed betook themselves to fight to Betook, betook themselves to flight from the battle. They're, they're running away. And they left Sayer's seed and fled when they saw that the battle was severe upon them. And Esau's seed pursued all the children of the east until they reached their lands. And Esau's seed slew them about 250 men. So they're, slewing, they're slaying now the east seed that they're chasing back to their land. And from the people of Esau's seed, there fell in the battle about 30 men. But, the evil, but this evil came upon them through their brethren, turning from them to assist Sayer the Horkorite's seed. And Esau's seed again heard the evil doings of their brethren, and they again mourned on account of this thing. And it came to pass after the battle that Esau's seed turned back and came home to Sair. Came home to Sair, that's their own. And Esau's seed slew those who had remained in the land of Sair's seed. They slew also their women. And little ones, they left not a soul alive except 50 young lads and damsels whom they suffered to live. Esau's seed did not put them to death. And the lads became their slaves and the damsels became their women. They always want to say wives. And... Esau's seed, seed dwelt in the land of Sayer, in the place of Sayer's seed. And they inherited their land and took possession of it. This land is going to be called the land of Edom. This is where the Edomites are going to come from. The Edomites are Esau's seed. Here it says in Genesis 36, there, there's many places that we can read this. Esau is Edom. And Esau, oh no, Genesis 36 says that Esau is Edom. Here's Genesis 36, 8. So Esau dwelt in Mount Sair. Esau is Edom. And this is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Sair. Okay, I'm trying to tie these together so that when we read about Edom later on, we're going to know this is Esau. You know, Torah doesn't address this battle in Hebron, this battle that's happening almost immediately after Hebron because of the uh, uh, the son of Esau, the grandson of Esau. What was his name? I forget right off on. Zepho. Zepho. Ben Eliphaz, Ben Esau. Because these guys were tough. Taurus does nothing about this battle. And look at this battle. 600 men died in this battle. And Taurus is silent about it. We don't realize how bad Esau is. And I have to ask the question, why is the seed of Esau being left out of Torah? How come we don't see this? Is it possible that Esau seed, they're going to turn into Edomites shortly, really are currently turning into Edomites. 
Is it possible that it could turn into Gazarians in the future? I wonder. I wonder if that's who we're actually fighting in our current day battles with good and evil. Esau's seed. Is that possible? I wonder. It could be. Remember, Esau got the, got the garments that came down from Adam and Eve. Nimrod got him first. That's what made him great. Esau got him. Who's got him now? And it came to pass. Oh, it says, uh, uh, let me finish reading this. And, and Esau's seed took all belonging in the land of Sayer's seed. Also their flocks, their bullocks, their cattle, the flocks are sheep and goats. Their bullocks is their cattle. And their goods, all belonging to Sayer's seed. Did Esau's seed take? And Esau's seed dwelt in Sayer in the place of Sayer's seed unto this day. And Esau's seed divided the land into divisions to the five sons of Esau according to their families. Here's the five sons of Esau. And Adah bore Eliphaz, Adah is his woman, bore Eliphaz to Esau, Bath, Mithbel. It's all, this is, doesn't matter who bore him. They had five sons. Eliphaz, Raul, Ra Ra uh, yeah. Yeah, Ye Yahush, Ya Alam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. And it came to pass in those days that Esau's seed, Esau's seed resolved. This is a totally strange verse. First sentence, okay. Second sentence, totally strange. And it came to pass in those days that Esau's seed resolved to crown a king over them in the land of which they had become possessed, Edom. And they said to each other, not so, for he shall reign over us in our land, and we shall be under his counsel, and we shall fight our battles against the enemies. And they did so. No idea what that means. Now, this makes more sense. And all Esau's seed swore that none of their brethren should reign over them, but a strange man who is not of their brethren. For the souls of all Esau's seed were embittered against his son, brother, friend, on account of the evil that they sustained when their brethren, when they fought. From their brother when they fought with Sayer seed. So they were bum beefed. Therefore, Esau's seed swore, saying, From that day forward, they would not choose a king from their brethren, but one from a strange land unto this day. Well, that's so interesting because what does Torah say about it? Look, Yehovah says a foreigner shall not rule over his people. It is like they are trying to oppose, trying to do opposite, trying to do, I should probably say the opposite, the opposite of what Esau had learned. Yeah, they don't want to do what they were taught. They're they're going to do uh, contrary to what Yehovah says. Here's what Yehovah says. Uh, this is in uh, Deuteronomy. When you come into the land which Yehovah your Elohim is giving you and possess it and dwell in it and say, I will set a king over me like the other nations that are around me. You shall surely set a king over you, whom Yehovah Elohim chooses. There's the number one criteria. From among your brethren, there's the number two. You shall set you shall set as king from your from among your brethren, you shall set a king to you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not of your brother. So they're doing just the opposite of what Yehovah tells Israel to do. Remember, he's, he's Isaac's seed, Isaac's son, just as Jacob is. 
One's going to obey, one isn't going to obey. Now look what it says. There was a man there from the people of Angaius, king of Dinema. His name was Bela, son of Beor. Oh, this is so interesting. Bela, son of Beor. He's going to be the first king. Here it is right here. Here, let me open it up. Easier to read. Bela is Balaam ben Beor's older brother. Do you remember who Balaam ben Beor is? We're going to find out. Now, these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before the king, before any king reigned over Israel's seed. Bela, son of Beor, reigned in Edom, and his name, and the name of his city was Dinabah. See, this is why I say Dinabah is a city and also a land because the uh, and guys is the king of Dinabah, but it also seems to be a city as well. And among the servants of Gaius, a young 15-year-old, Balaam, son of Beor, was his name, and the youth was very wise and understood the art of witchcraft. Is this further development of the deep state, I wonder? Wait till you see who some of these people are and what they do. Um, here, I wrote an article. You really should read it, but I'm going to just show you that it's that it's here for right now. Here it is. You find it under Ancient Fathers, uh, Balaam, Balaam ben Beor ben. Yeah, here, Balaam ben Beor ben Janus ben Balaam ben Beor. I know it sounds like a mouthful, doesn't it? But here we're talking about Beor. He is a Syrian in Dinaba. Bella is Balaam ben Beor's. Balaam ben Beor's. This is Bella ben Beor. Older brother. Balaam ben Beor is going to have Janus and Jambres, born in Egypt. Janus is going to have another Beor, born in Egypt who's going to move to Pathar, who's going to have a son named Balaam, who's born in Egypt, who's the Balaam that we talk about in numbers like 27 and 28. It all fits together. It's so very interesting. Uh, but you got, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. You got to put it together. If you don't put it together, you never learn what's really significant. And today we're going to find out more about what is significant about Esau's seed and the battles that we're fighting in these 55 years between Jacob's death and Joseph's death. Chapter 50 in Genesis doesn't say anything about it. Completely silent. But these are really important events that are taking place in this 55 years. Let me continue. And there was a man there from the people of Angaius, king of Dinah. But he's one of the uh, 1,400 uh, people that he sent. No, 1,400, 1,100 plus 600, 1,700 people that he sent. Bella was one of them. His name was Bella ben Beor, who was very, very valiant man, beautiful and comely, wise in all wisdom. He was a deep stater, I think, and a man of sense and counsel. And there was none of the people of Angaius. There was none of the people of Angaius like unto him. They took him as their king. And all Esau's seed betook him and anointed him, and they crowned him for a king. And they bowed down to him, and they said unto him, May the king live, may the king live, long live the king. And they spread out a sheet. No, they spread out the sheet. And they brought him each man earrings of gold, silver, or rings 
or bracelets. And they made him very rich in silver and gold and onyx stones and bedallium. You know, these guys just killed a whole bunch of people. The Esed, Sayer Seed, they inherited all their possessions. They got plenty of things to give. And they made him a royal throne. And they placed a regal crown upon his head. And they built a palace for him, and he dwelt therein, and he became king over all Esau's seed. And the people of Angaius took their hire for their battle from Esau's seed. And they went and returned at that time to their master in Dinabah. They were, they were, uh, uh, what did I call them? For not fortune hunters, um, Warriors for hire. I forget the name. And Bella reigned over Esau's seed. There it is. Bella reigned over Esau's seed. I want to copy this. Uh, I'm going to use it later. Delete. I, I was wondering where this verse was. Uh, this is chat. Oh, shoot. I want that to delete again. I want to select the text. And copy the text. And this is Yasher, copy, Yasher chapter 57. We're going to insert this someplace later on. Just got to remember Yasher. Mercenaries. Mercenaries, yes, thank you. That's the word I was looking for. You know, I appreciate you jumping in like that. Thank you so much. Yeah, they're mercenaries. They received their pay and they went back to Tinnabah. Didn't see that they were mercenaries until then, but now we know they were mercenaries. Jacob died in the 17th year of their time in Egypt. Now, I want you to always remember when you talk about the people of Egypt and how long they were there, we also know Yochaved's age. She was born the same year that we came to Egypt. She was in uterus when, when uh, we came to, into the land. She was born that first year. So she tells us, how long we've been in the land, and when they say how long they've been in the land, we know how old she is. Well, I think that's important because she's the mother of Moses through Abraham. So let's keep that in mind. And it came to pass. Also, I said at, at his death, uh, we fought with Esau's seed. Esau's, Esau died at that time, and we took his grandson Zepho, Ben Eliphaz, Ben Esau, and many grandsons captives. So they are in Egypt right now. And it came to pass in the 32nd year of the Israelites going down to Egypt. So now this is 15 years after Jacob's death. It came to pass in the 15th, in the 32nd year of the Israelites going down to Egypt. That is the 71st year of the life of Joseph. What do I have here? Joseph will die at 110, which is only 39 years away. Magron rules for 40 years. So Joseph dies a year before him. Okay, that's good Good things to understand. This is uh, uh, Yogabed. It means she's 32. If, if we've been in the land for 32 years, she's 32. Uh, just keep it in mind. It's important. Uh, in that year died Pharaoh, king of Egypt. This is the king that loved Joseph so much. And Magron, his son, reigned in his stead. Look what Pharaoh told Moses about Magron. And Pharaoh commanded Joseph before his death to be a father to his son, Magron. Do you think Pharaoh loved Moses? And that Magron should be under the care of Joseph and under his counsel. And all Egypt consented to this thing, that Joseph should be king over them. For all the Egyptians loved Joseph, as of heretofore, only Magron, the son of Pharaoh, sat, son of Pharaoh sat upon his father's throne. And he became king 
in those days in his father's stead. So I had 71 years is Joseph's age right now. He's going to reign 40 years. That's Megron's reign. That brings him to 111. We know Joseph lives to be 110. So that means that Joseph is going to pass one year before Megron passes. And the new king is going to rise that does not know. Israel, Joseph. He knows them. He knows their reputation. We'll see. We'll see. There's more, there's more to this story. Megram was 40, 41 years old when he began to reign, and 40 years he reigned in Egypt. So this is the 40 years that Joseph is going to reign in Egypt. And all Egypt called his name Pharaoh. Where does the name Pharaoh come from? You know what? We don't know in Torah. We learned it in Yasher. Here it is. Uh, you know, I think that would be a little bit bigger too. No, I guess it's the right size. And the king answered and said to, to Rikion, Thy name shall no longer be called Rikion, but Pharaoh shall be thy name, since thou didst enact a tax from the dead. And he called his name Pharaoh. This is where the Pharaohs get their name, because Rikion taxed the dead to be buried. Megram was 41 years old when he began to reign, and 40 years he reigned in Egypt, and all Egypt called his name Pharaoh after, the, after the name of his father, as it was the custom to do in Egypt to every king that reigned over them. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh reigned in his father's stead, he placed the laws of Egypt and all the affairs of government in the hands of Joseph, as his father had commanded him. And Joseph became king over Egypt, for he superintended over all Egypt. And all Egypt was under his care and under his counsel, for Egypt inclined to Joseph unto the death of Pharaoh, after the death of Pharaoh, and they loved him exceedingly to reign over them. But, 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 there were some people amongst them who did not like him, saying, no strangers shall reign over us. Still the whole government of Egypt devolved in those days upon Joseph. After the death of Pharaoh, he being the regulator, doing as he liked throughout the land without anyone interfering. And all Egypt was under the care of Joseph. And Joseph made war with all the sur surrounding enemies, and he subdued them also, all the land, all also all the land, and all the Philistines unto the borders of Canaan did Joseph subdue. Well, we're going to see he's actually going further than that. And they were all under his power, and they gave a yearly tax unto Joseph. This is a tribute. They're giving a tribute, yearly tribute unto Joseph. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, sat on his throne in his father's stead. He was under the control and counsel of Joseph, as he was at first under the control of his father. Neither did he reign, neither, neither did he reign, but in the land of Egypt only. Funny they say neither, did he? Uh, he reigned in the land of Egypt only under the counsel of Joseph. But Joseph reigned over the whole land at that time, from Egypt unto the great river Parath. I have no idea where this great river Parath, I've tried to find it. I can't find it. If anybody knows, I'd love to know. I think it must be north. Because look at the places that he's, he's taking control of. And Joseph was successful in all his ways, and Yehovah was with him. And Yehovah gave Joseph additional wisdom and honor and glory and love towards him in the hearts of the Egyptians and throughout the land. Joseph reigned over the whole country 40 years. 
40 years. This is going to be, it says in verse 1, it said 32 uh, after we came out of Egypt. Now uh, we have been in Egypt 40 more years, so 72, uh, in, when Joseph dies. Yochved is 72 currently. No, she will be 72 when Joseph, when Joseph dies. I apologize. So now look what it says. And all the countries of the Philistines and Canaan and Zidon. This is, this is Sidon, S-I-D-O-N, Sidon. This is above Canaan. And on the other side of the Jordan brought presents unto Joseph all his days. And the whole country was in the hand of Joseph. And they brought unto him a yearly tribute. This is the gifts that they brought to him every year. As it was regulated, for Joseph had fought against all the surrounding enemies and subdued them. And the whole country was in the hand of Joseph. And Joseph sat securely upon the throne of Egypt. Joseph's powerful. And all his brethren, Jacob's seed, dwelt securely in the land all the days of Joseph. And they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly in the land. And they served Yehovah all their days, as their father Jacob had commanded them. They didn't serve Pharaoh. They served Yehovah. Being fruitful and serving Yehovah, they go together. But look at this next verse. And it came to pass at the end of many days and years when Esau's seed were drawing quietly in the land with Bela, their king, that Esau's seed were fruitful and multiplied in the land. The fruitful and multiplied. How are they fruitful? They've never been fruitful in their life and multiplied in the land. This is why I say so many want to say they multiplied and multiplied. That sounds like another way of saying multiplied. It's not what it means. And they resolve to go and fight Jacob's seed. They're going to do it again. And all Egypt deliver their brother Zepho, Ben Eliphaz, and his men, for they were yet in those days slaves, in jo slaves to Joseph. And Esau's seed sent unto the east seed and they made peace with them remember the east seed was fighting with the sons of Zaire against Esau's seed uh, in the last battle now some time has passed by they're fighting with them again and they made peace with them and the east seed came unto them to go to Esau's seed to Egypt to, to battle gee you think they would have learned the first time and there came also unto them of the people of Angaius, king of Dinabah, and they also sent unto Ishmael's seed. Now here's Ishmael's seed getting involved. And they came unto them. And all this people assembled and came unto Sayer, came unto Sayer. It's funny they say Sayer, they're still calling it Sayer, to assist Esau's seed in the battle. And this company was very large and heavy with people, numerous as the sands of the sea, 800,000 infantry and cavalry. And all these troops went down to Egypt to fight with Jacob's seed. And they encamped at Ramses, 800,000 men and cavalry are coming to fight with us. Look at what we're going to do. And Joseph went forth with his brethren, with the mighty men of Egypt, about 600 men. About 600 men. This is 600 men fighting 800,000 men. Do you know what the odds are? 133 to 1 odds. But that's about right. Look what it says here in jo concerning Joseph or Joshua. This is Joshua 23, 9 through 11. And Jehovah has driven them out before you, uh, before you great and strong nations. But as for you, 
no one was able to stand against you on this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. You're, for Yehovah, your Elohim, is he who fights for you as he promised you. Therefore, take careful heed to yourselves that you love Yehovah, your Elohim. You know what? The world does not want you to know that you can be strong if you love only Yehovah, your Elohim. They don't want you to know that. Look at this. We got 600 men fighting 800,000 men. How many are going to die? Let's find out. And they fought with them in the land of Ramses. Jacob's seed at that time fought against Esau's seed in in the 50th year of Jacob's seed going down to Egypt. That is the 13th year of, 30th year of the reign of Bella. This is the word I was looking for right here. Uh, I said, uh, Yasher. Did I say Yasher 57? I think I did. Yasher 57. Wanted to get this note into there. Control V. There we go. And we can do this and this. And Bella reigned over is uh, over Esau's seed thirty years. That's what we wanted to have. I like having things tied together. All right. So, fiftieth year of Jacob's son going down to Egypt. We know that Jacob is now fifty years old. This is the thirteenth year. Of the reign of Bella, 30th year of the reign of Bella, he was going to reign 30 years. So, what does that tell us? It tells us he's going to die in the battle uh, uh, over Esau's seed in Sair. And Yehovah gave all the mighty men of Esau and the east seed into the hands of Joseph and his brethren, and the people of Esau's seed and the people of the east were smitten before Joseph and of Esau's seed, Esau's people and the east seed that were slain, there fell before Jacob's seed about 200,000 men. 200,000 men are going to die today. And their king Bela, son of Beor, told you, fell with them in the battle. He only lived 30 years. And when Esau's seed saw that their king had fallen in battle and was dead, their hand became weak in combat. And Joseph and his brethren, all Egypt, were still smiting the people of the house of Esau's house. And all Esau's people were afraid of Jacob's seed and fled from before them. And Joseph and his brethren and all Egypt and all Egypt pursued them a day's journey. This is six hundred men chasing six hundred thousand men to smite them in the road, and they afterwards turned back from them. Now look at this. And Joseph and all his brethren returned to Egypt. Not one man was missing from them. We did not lose a single man of Joseph Israel, but of the Egyptians there, but of the Egyptian there fell 12 men. Amazing. And when Joseph returned to Egypt, he ordered Zepho and his men to be additionally bound. Why is he doing this? What did they do? When Joseph returned to Egypt, he's mad because of the war. Zepho and his men to be additionally bound, and they bound them in irons, and they increased their griefs. Seems unnecessary to me. Uh, I don't know here. Uh, yeah, if Jacob and Esau, uh, if Jacob and Esau died in our seventeenth year in Egypt, then. When Zepho and his companions were taken captive, I'm sorry, when, when that is when Zepho and his companions were taken captive. This last battle happened in our 50th year 
in Egypt. So Zepho and company have been held captive for 33 years. Yes, he's been in there for 33 years. He's going to leave after Jacob, after Joseph dies. Well, that's a sneak peer view. And all the people of Esau's seed and the east seed returned in shame, each each unto his city, for all the mighty men that were with them had fallen in battle. And Esau's seed saw that their king had died in the battle and hastened and took a man from the people of the east seed. His name was Yabav, the son of Zarah, from the land of Basra. And that's exactly what Torah says, the land of Basra. Where's the land of Basra? Uh, Basra is a city in Sair. It's the capital city from what I can see. And when Bela died, Yovav, king of Zarah, of Basra, reigned in his place. He's going to reign 10 years. And Yavav sat upon the throne of Bela as king in his stead. And Yovav reigned in Edom. So now it says Edom. We were just talking about Sayer. Now it says Edom reigned over Edom and all Esau's seed 10 years. And Esau's seed went no more to fight with Jacob's seed. From that day forward, for Esau's seed knew the valor of the son of Jacob's seed, and they were greatly afraid of them. Think about it. Now, let's, let's wait just a little bit longer. I'll mention this. But from that day forward, Esau's seed hated Jacob's seed. They still did. And hated the, en- and the hatred and enmity were very strong between them all the days unto this day. Yes, I think that can be true as well. And it came to pass after this, at the end of 10 years, Yovav, Remember, we had this battle in our 50th year, so now we're up to 60 years in Egypt. We're going to go to 71 years is when Joseph's going to die. No, 72 years is when Joseph's going to die of us being in Egypt. No, that doesn't make sense either. I'll think about it. We'll get it. Uh, it came to pass after this, at the end of 10 years, again, 60 years we've been in Egypt now, that was at 50 years, the sons of Zara, the son of Zara, the from Basra, died. And Esau C took a man whose name was Kusham from the land of Tema, Tima, and Tema, I guess. And they made him king over them instead of Yavav. Here, this is, this is the verse. And when Yavav, when Yavav died, Kusham, the, the land, from the land of the Temanites, Taman, Temanites, reigned in their place. And Kusham reigned over Edom, over all Esau's seed for 20 years. So we had 60 years, so we're now up to 80 years of us being in in uh, Egypt. I want to say that we're going to, Joseph's going to die in our 70, yes, that's what it is. Joseph's going to die in our 72nd year in Egypt. So when, when Joseph dies in our 72nd year in Egypt, this man is still reigning. That's how it is. Joseph's going to die in 110. And Joseph, king of Egypt, and his brethren, All Israel's seed dwelt securely in the land in those days, together with Joseph's seed and his brethren. Seems like that's a little redundant. And his brethren, Joseph's seed and his brethren, that's the Israel's seed. Uh, Having no hindrance or evil accidents. And the land of Egypt at that time, and the land of Egypt was at that time at rest from war in the days of Joseph and his brethren. We're going to stop here. Joseph is going to pass next week. 
and there is going to arise in Egypt a king that does not, a pharaoh that does not know Joseph. But you know what? This pharaoh knows what happened 20 years before. Well, even uh, 70, 22 years before when 600 men fought against an 800,000 men army. Yeah, there's, this is big stuff. This is really big stuff. Well, we're going to stop here. Thank you for joining me. And next week, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about this genealogy again. I, I, this is the second time in Yasher. Uh, we did it once in uh, Torah. But uh, we're doing it again, briefly. It won't last long. Uh, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.